All right. I want to be able to see what people are saying here, so I'm going to move the camera just a little bit. But I decided I wanted to do a collection overview video here sometime at the end of 2020. And I figured today was as good as any. And this is going to be a collection overview of my modern knives. Um, so I do a lot of videos and posts and articles on traditional knives, but I do a lot on modern knives also, and I really enjoy them. So I thought I might as well do a video, and I'm basically just going to run through um, most of or, or a lot of my modern knives here. I hope that it looks all right. I see a couple people are watching. Um, does the video look all right here? Can you see it? Can you hear it and everything like that? Um, but I hope so, and I'm just going to run through uh, most of my knives. So first off here, this is one that I've had for a long time. This is the Spyderco Native 5 in fluted titanium. Let me see here if we can get a little bit better focus, but really nice fluted titanium. This one was a gift from one of my brothers in either 2012 or 2013. Um, and I've carried it a lot. I've used it a lot. Um, I've sharpened it a lot. As you can see, the, the blade is kind of sharpened down a bit, but really great knife, great EDC knife. I love the grip. I love the blade shape and just a really great knife. Um, I'm going to kind of run through some of these. I'm going to try not to take too, too long on each one because, you know, I don't want it to take too long, but this is another Spyderco. This is the Spyderco Ouroboros or a Ruberos, or however you say that. Um, but this one was a gift from my wife, um, then girlfriend, maybe fiance. I'm forgetting when, when she gave this to me. But um, it is a really cool knife. It's one that I wanted for a long time and uh, just didn't get, and then she gave it to me, and it was really exciting. Um, it has a very unique shape, which is, you know, something that Spyderco does relatively often. Um, I really like the shape. It feels really good in hand, both in this type of grip, really fills the palm, and then up, choked up here like this. Um, mine has super nice action. Um, a lot of people complained about the Teflon washers, and I do think, you know, why not put bronze washers in there um, at, the, at the price and everything, but mine is... I mean, super smooth. It's draw closed. I haven't had to adjust it in the couple years that I've had it, and it is very solid. Um, so really cool knife, one that I enjoy a lot, and obviously means a lot to me because of how I got it. Um, another one here that I kind of keep in the same slot in my... Um, I, I store most of my modern knives in a like ammo can with a foam cut up. And uh, this it goes in the same slot. And this is another one that was a gift from my uh, wife. This is the Spyderco Rody, another one that I've been interested in because it's, uh, you know, I do like slip joints a lot, traditional knives. And this is an interesting one from Spyderco. It was actually designed um, when the TSA said that they were gonna start allowing certain knives onto planes. Um, this fit the criteria and then they went back on that, which, you know, is course stupid and irritating I guess but um Spyderco still made it and it's a cool little knife uh it has the trademark hold but then you actually open it with this kind of dimple here and I've used it a good bit um whoops have had to sharpen it a bunch um and drop the kick a little bit but really cool little knife put it back in and move on to another Spyderco so this is the Spyderco Domino. Um, good evening. Uh, it's um, just afternoon here where I am. It's uh, like 12 something. But uh, this is the Spyderco Domino. This one I actually traded for teaching some private lessons with a friend and student in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and my normal job. Um, it's a discontinued Spyderco, one that a lot of people like. Um, it wasn't, I don't think, super popular while it was out. And then since it's been Merry Christmas to you too there, uh, Jersey Knife Guy. Hope you're doing well. Um, but now that it's out, uh, people really like it. It has this blue lightning strike carbon fiber. And I really like that. But interestingly, that's why the person, you know, didn't 
want to keep it. They, it was too flashy for them. But uh, this is one I have a video on. I sent to Spyderco recently. Um, they put new screws in and uh, fixed it up. It, it does flip really well, um, nice and smooth. Drop close, as you can see. Um, no blade play and pretty well centered. This is how I, I sent it to, to Spyderco. So it's just kind of the, um, you know, where it sits, but another nice knife and one that is, you know, cool because I got it and traded it for some private lessons. Um, moving on to another Spyderco here. One of my most carried um, in 2020 for sure. This is the Spyderco Police 4 Lightweight. I had the original Police 4, which is in G10 and K390. Um, I obviously am super familiar and comfortable with um, carbon steel, non-stainless steel, but I just could not keep it from rusting. So I got rid of it and got this one. I was really excited for this one for a long time. Got it for a good deal from uh, River's Edge Cutlery. Actually, there, there um, I go there uh, or have the past few years when I'm out in the area for the Arnold Classic for a Jiu-Jitsu tournament. Um, I just really like this knife. It, uh, has an extremely comfortable grip because it doesn't have big finger scallops, which I'll talk about on the Andorra in a second. It has smooth, you know, instead of pointed ridges here. I really like the bi-directional texturing. Um, it fits my hand super well with a thumb ramp. It's very long. It's like a four and a half or something inch blade and uh, cuts super, super well. So I, I've been really happy with this one. I like it a lot. Um, yeah, it is a big knife for sure. I mean, you know, some places it's not even legal. Thankfully, it is in my state and area, but um, it's a big knife, very long. Also very lightweight, though, so uh, I don't have too much trouble carrying it. Um, one of my favorite carries for sure. And another Spyderco. You know, I'm going to go through my through these generally by manufacturer, so uh, there are going to be a few Spydercos here, but this is the Spyderco Chalkway. This is one that um, was really popular. It's part of their ethnic um, series, and I really liked it. This was probably my favorite carry knife for at least a couple years. Um, and then it started developing a really, really bad uh, case of lock stick. I sent it into Spyderco, and they literally said, there's nothing we can do to improve the condition of the knife, which was frustrating for sure. Um, it looks like I need to clean some of these off. Um, but it was frustrating and I ended up fixing it myself through a whole bunch of work with the spring tension or the frame lock tension and the angle of the, you know, thing here. But it was like I couldn't open it without um, using a screwdriver. So, uh, you know, still a cool knife. I, I It kind of soured me on it a little bit, that experience sending it into Spyderco and the fact that it got really bad uh, lock stick. But... Still a really cool knife. I love uh, a this simple handle. Um, Steven Kevin Doss asked, would you ever think of buying an EDC tray? Um, I have thought of that. Uh, I kind of keep my stuff various places. Uh, most of my knives I keep in a specific room. Um, I actually tucked underneath a bed. Uh, but... EDC stuff I change so often, you know, the stuff that I change like knives and things, I, I, um, this is not the Watu. Uh, I'll talk, I'm going to show the Watu next. This is a previous model that the Watu was then based on. I'll leave this one out actually to show the Watu. So, uh, but I, I don't use an EDC tray or a valet tray, although I would be open to it. Um, I just, I'm probably not going to buy one at the prices that the nice ones are. Uh, but this is the Watu, and the Watu is a smaller version of the Chalkway with updated steel and handle. Um, this has this uh, carbon fiber laminate. A lot of people don't like the laminate. I really don't care about it. I think it looks nice and feels nice in the hand, and that's what really matters. The weight is not that much different. Um, but it has CPM 20 CV versus the uh, CPM S30 V of the Chalkway. And uh, the Chalkway has a frame lock, whereas the Watu has a um, compression lock. This one didn't come uh, quite as smooth as it is now. I adjusted it a little bit, but it is um, super, super smooth now. Drop closed, as you can see. 
I like this knife. I do like the size of the Chalkway better, um, but this one, because of the nice simple handle, does still fit in my hand really well. Um, I've always thought that the Chalkway would have made a good flipper, uh, but you know, I think the Watu is really nice, not as a flipper. I also do prefer the um, wire clip over the spoon clip. Uh, generally. So I really like this. I like that the holes go the whole way through like this. And um, it's a really nice little knife, especially if you do want to carry something a little bit smaller and lighter than the Chalkway. Uh, here is the classic Spyderco Endora. And um, the first thing I want to point out with this one, I actually rounded these corners. I, I've never liked the 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 sharp points here on the Endora handle, it actually kind of has, it's made me sell other Endoras. So I run them by just sanding them down. Not super difficult, but also doesn't look super great. Uh, so something that I do, you know, think that they should make the handles on the Endora more like the handles on the police with like less sharp points. But, you know, I think the Endora is a, and the Delica are great sellers, so they're probably not gonna change too much about it. But um, this one has been used a whole lot, um, nice and scratched up, sharpened down, things like that. I've had this one for a while. Um, I know I had it when we were moving locations uh, for my work, so at least a couple years. And um, it's a good knife, it's classic. Moving on to another Spyderco. I've got a hole in my um, spots here and I don't know what knife might be missing from it. Um, but anyway, here's this is a Spyderco uh, Caribbean. And um, if you saw my video on the Caribbean and the Domino, um, I got this knife, I used it lightly. Um, I used it for uh, cutting a sunflower down and some boxes and I didn't hit any staples or anything and the edge was like, destroyed um and it was it came as a fully serrated knife actually um so i sent it into spider co hoping that they would take a look at it see if maybe it was ground too thin or the edge was burnt or something like that um they basically just sharpened it and unfortunately when they sharpened it they took a whole lot of um you know steel off to the point where it kind of rounded the serrations and i had had the knife for like a couple days at that point before i sent it in so i decided to do uh a pretty serious modification here and change it into a plain edge. And it does not look good. I'm not going to tell you that it does. It definitely doesn't look good, but it works. It's basically a chisel grind, um, secondary bevel here, and um, it, you know, cuts. So I got this knife to be a camping and like water knife. Um, I go rafting and canoeing sometimes, and I thought it would be good for that, especially with the sheep foot blade. Um, and it'll work fine for that with the modified plain edge. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting a spider coat, but that's all I've got in here. So um, I'm going to move on to my Civivi slash We Made knives. Uh, so this is the, where did it say it? Mass Drop, which is now just drop. Um, Ray Laconico designed. We Knives Made Keen. And I got this knife because Ray Laconico's um, designs are uh, my favorite custom knife designs. I love the simple lines. I've been interested in them pretty much since I got into, you know, knives seriously and uh, have always wanted them, but they're, you know, pricey, of course. And I thought that um, this... Uh, so do I have my eye on any certain brand of traditional this year and what's a good traditional that everyone can get? Um, I mean, GEC, you know, I, I think that GEC is going to do cool things in 2021. Um, I like, I hope that uh, Shatton Morgan, so um, Gilbert Cooper is reintroducing the Shatton Morgan brand. I'm really looking forward to seeing how those go. I hope it goes well. I hope they have the right business model. Um, I think it's a tough thing to do, but I really hope that it goes well because it would be great to have good Shat and Morgan knives back on the market. Um, another brand that I'm definitely trying to get uh, in my collection is Albers Cutlery. Um, I've done some videos on them 
Eric Albers is a master cutler that finally has gone out on his own um, and uh, is, you know, making really beautiful knives. I mean, I would say that there, I've seen three or four, um, well, I've seen probably more than that, but I've had in my possession three or four, um, you know, various loans and things like that. And um, I think that they're higher quality than GEC generally, uh, and they're not super, super expensive, but right now they're very difficult to get. So definitely looking uh, for Albers Cutlery. I saw Zen Ali there um, <clears throat> said that Boker has been killing it. I have had no Boker knives, uh, traditional knives. So um, there's always knives that I want that, that like, you know, I would definitely love to check out a Boker knife, but there's always knives that are higher on my list, um, I guess. So uh, maybe I'll check out a Boker, but I'm not sure. But anyway, Ray Laconico makes my favorite designs. They're just kind of expensive, haven't gotten one. And um, some other companies like Kaiser have done Ray Laconico designs before, um, before this knife was made, but I didn't feel like they really hit that like look that um, minimalist look that I like so much about his designs. And I felt that this one did. Uh, it was about $150, maybe $140. Um, I've used it a lot. Uh, it has some weird staining that um, doesn't seem to be turning into rust at all, but is from cleaning it. Happy holidays, Ethan Ruins EDC. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, but it has S35 VN steel. Yeah, S35 VN steel. Um, and it's a nice frame lock. It has the lock bar insert, which of course I like. I hate getting lock stick. Um, titanium handles, I really like the clip, and it is just super smooth. Um, like glassy smooth, drop closed for sure. Super easy to flip. And a nice design. I mean, it's a good user design. So I really like this one. This was my first, I believe, Wii knife. I have had some others that I don't currently have. I traded into, um, a Wii knife and just didn't feel like keeping it. Um, then another Wii knife in my collection is the Banter or the Nafsco Banter. I am so bad at saying that 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 name, but um, K N A F S is Ben Peterson's um, knife company or EDC, I guess, company. Uh, kind of a side thing he's doing since leaving the industry or not doing video work for the industry anymore. And um, I actually, a really interesting story with this knife. I have a full video uh, review and uh, I believe an article. But the reason I got this is I saw a picture of it on Reddit and the picture was not a good representation of it, I'll tell you that. It made it look even stouter and kind of like stubbier than it really is. Um, and I kind of did like an um, visual review and uh, Ben actually saw it and appreciated that I could do such a detailed review um, just from a picture and said he would send one and uh, super cool I was really excited he sent like a whole package with a shirt and poster and everything like that which I really appreciate and I think it says a good thing about him I think it says that he's willing to take criticism when it is actual well thought out criticism and not just like vitriol and that was what I was doing and what I did with the knife. And I actually really like it. Um, some people don't, for sure. It, it is blocky. I'm not going to say that it's not a block, blocky knife or that it is the best looking knife design I've ever seen because it just isn't. Um, it's kind of like square in the handle. Um, the blade is kind of squat a little bit. Uh, but it works really well. It's a good little EDC knife. I found it cut well. Um, it was easy to get at and use, and it's made well. It has a um, a uh, liner lock there, always locks up nicely. Also super smooth, like very glassy smooth, easy to flip open. Um, yeah, some people I think that's their reaction, uh, is yawn to this knife. But um, it's, a, it's a cool little knife, even though it's not the best... Uh, you know, design. I think it would be better if they kept the same height of the handle and blade and lengthen the blade by like an inch. Um, I would really like that and it would bring it in line with a lot of the uh, classic large and smalls like the Endora and the um, Delica, the Benchmade Griptilian and Mini Griptilian, um, Ontario Rat 1 and Rat 2, which actually that's the one that I'm missing now that I think about it. 
Oh, it's over on the table. I'll just grab it. Um, but this is a Civivi knife. Uh, so really made by the same company or manufacturer as um, we knives, but it is the budget version. Uh, this is a knife that I wanted for a long time. Yeah, and it is the Wyvern. Uh, this is the, the Civivi Wyvern. It's a knife that I wanted for a long time. Actually, the... the this knife had the same handle pattern, but in titanium, so it is less than $50, um, but very easy to find. I was just going to slightly flip open and can and the handle, I like how the top liners and solid detail are fiberglass reinforced nylon, but you can, I hand a little hand. These, this gives a lot, you can kind of, you know, feel it and get a little bit more grip there. Um, but I really like this knife. Um, I'm thinking about doing a video on fiberglass reinforced handles because I know a lot of people don't like them, and I do like them. Uh, let's see. So I believe, no, I have one other CRKT knife. Um, so I'll show you that here also. But uh, this is my CRKT made Ruger Mag Plus P or something, I think. Hollow Point Plus P. Uh, so it's a Ken Onion design, which you know kind of fits his design with the curvy blade. It's a kind of a trailing point, clip point. Um, also has fiberglass reinforced nylon or maybe just nylon uh, with a cross, uh, what do they call that? Anyway, this pattern that's like on a lot of gun stocks. And the reason I have this knife is because it was on sale at Walmart for $7. And for that price, it is a definitely a great buy. Um, it's not the nicest knife in the world. It is a nice knife, though. It has, I think, 8CR13 MOV steel, has IKBS ball bearings. Um, it's like an inset frame lock. Uh, it's, it's not really a line lock. It's not really a frame lock, more like an inset frame lock. And honestly, super smooth. Yeah, $7 is a heck of a deal on this knife. Um, it works well. I've used it actually weirdly enough to skin a rabbit. Um, we had a very serious um, pest problem with groundhogs and rabbits. And right when I was leaving for work one day, uh, one of the, the traps caught a rabbit. And do I agree that CRKT Ruger and Hogue Sig Sauer H&M licensed knives are better than Smith & Wesson? Um, I'll say yes, because uh, I've only, HK, yeah, um, I've only had a few Smith & Wessons, and they were like basically gas station knife level. Um, I'm sure they make a few good knives, but I have not had them. I have not seen them. Um, the Smith & Wessons I've seen have been like barely functional. And Ruger CRKTs, I actually have seen another one, um, and I bought a few of the this particular model, but... Uh, they're they're nicely made. I mean, it's a nice knife. It doesn't have any blade play. Flips open, and uh, you know, works well. Like I said, uh, caught a rabbit. Was leaving for work, so I had to use what I had to to skin it because I didn't want it to go to waste. And uh, that was what I used. But my only other CRKT um, folding knife right now is this. Uh, what is it? Kiss or what is it? Peck. So it's the Peck. Ed Halligan Peck, and I'm not sure what Peck stands for. It um, stands for something, but this was actually a gift from the same person who I traded the um, Domino with, and it's an interesting little knife. It's, you could use it as like a money clip or something like that, which would be kind of cool. It's like a frame lock with only one side uh, that actually has the frame, um, but yeah, works works well. I have it with my keychain knives here, and I do throw it like on my keychain sometimes, just because it's a cool little thing. Um, good backup knife. But that's my only other CRKT. Uh, so let's see. Let's go to Benchmade. So I currently only have one Benchmade. Really considering getting. Uh, so um, do you think it's going to be any easier buying GEC knives? Um, no, I think it's going to be harder. I think it's going to be significantly more difficult in 2021. I mean, who knows what's going to happen in 2021. I'm certainly not someone who thinks everything's going to get better like some people do. Um, it's been a weird, wild year here in 2020, and I think 2021 will be also. But no, I don't think that it'll be easier to get them. Um, I don't... I. Avoid buying GEC knives on the secondary market at basically all costs. The only ones I would buy on the secondary market are long gone ones. Um, and uh, there are some that I want to get of that. But no, I don't think it would be easier. But I've been thinking about getting the Presidio 2. 
Benchmade Presidio 2. Uh, there's one, or someone has them on sale for a good price on eBay. Uh, and unfor it's unfortunate that it won't be easier to get um, GEC's uh, Jersey Knife Guy. I wish that it was, but it's just not. I mean, I typically have always been able to get whatever GECs I wa wanted, and I haven't been able to this year. I've missed some reserves if I didn't jump on them and email someone right away. Um, but uh, this is the Benchmade Griptilian. This is the, um, what do they call this? this? They call this the sheet foot. It's not really a sheet foot, but maybe like a quite modified sheet foot. Uh, but it has an opening hole, which I like. Um, although I like all of the blade shapes on the Griptilians, I think that they're all well done for what they are. Um, but this is a classic. I mean, everybody knows the Benchmade Griptilian. I really like the handles. A lot of people don't. I do. I like this texture. I like the grip. It feels great in the hand. Super smooth. I've never had any issues with this knife. Um, I know a lot of people have talked about Benchmade's quality control, but this is a super nicely made knife. I got this either last year or the year before on Black Friday for a real good deal. Um, it is the S30V version, and um, I think you can still get these Griptilians at good prices. Uh, so there's something to look for. If you can find one in the like 70, 80, even 90 uh, dollar range, I think that it's a pretty good knife if you get the S30V version. I mean, the other, the 154 CM versions are good too, but they're, they're getting harder to find. But just overall a great knife, good user. I've used it a lot. Not too much to say about it that hasn't already been said. So classic Benchmade Griptilian. And then my only ZT right now, I've had a lot of ZT knives. I was really into them for a while. Um, they actually blocked me and so did Kershaw and I think now Kai too. They blocked Knife Thoughts on Instagram for, I criticized the uh, pivot tool that they made for the one knife because they didn't make it for like months after the knife came out. The pivot tool didn't come out and then you had to buy the pivot tool separately. And I thought it was like super silly. Um, I've always wanted to try the Hoag Ritter, uh, which is like a grip Um, but I just never have. Uh, but um, I criticized the pivot tool and they uh, blocked me. Zero Tolerance and Kershaw have a long history of not being very, um, I don't know, not having the greatest public relations. Uh, they basically took their ball and left off of blade forums because of criticism and um, that they often block people and delete comments and stuff on social media. So they blocked me and then I, <laughs> I messaged them on my personal account. It's like, hey, like, I like your knives. I carry your knives. Like, you know, I was just like, it's just some criticism, you know, and then they blocked my personal account, I think. <laughs> so um, anyway, this is the only ZT I have. It's ZT0561, uh, a classic, and I think the best ZT knife ever. Um, this is a Rick Hinderer design. Uh, just overall a super great knife, um, not too ridiculous to the point where you can't carry it, but big, uh, beefy, has a frame lock with the lock bar insert, the lock bar stabilizer, um, and great classic drop point blade shape, super smooth, um, and <clears throat> the funny thing is I do like ZT and Kershaw, I mean, I haven't been super into most of ZT's designs recently, but they've given me great service in the past. Um, this knife actually had a crack at the pin um, or at the thumb stud, and they replaced the blade for free, I believe, uh, because it was, you know, a genuine warranty issue. Uh, so, um, you know, and Kershaw has always had a great warranty for me. But I really like this knife. It's a definite keeper in my collection and one that um, I really enjoy. <clears throat> and I hope that ZT makes more knives like that in the future. Uh, let's see, moving on here, we'll go with Cold Steel since, um, since this, uh, oh, I, I skipped the Spyderco. Let me go to the Spyderco first. I skipped this one because it's in a pocket in the side here. This is probably the, as collection goes, the gem of my Spyderco collection. Um, this is a Spyderco worker from the literal first run of knives that Spyderco made. Um, not that this is the, not just that this is like the first model that they made, but this is from the first time that they made this model. Uh, I was at a, a gun show actually, and um, one of the tables was someone, they were like, it was a former police officer that was moving or something like that, and they were selling everything. And I saw this and a 
Spyderco Police Pig or Pride Integrity Guts model. And I knew that they were both really cool old collection pieces. I got them for a real good deal. And then I went and looked this one up and there's a couple things that tell you, but uh, the clip being two screws and this flat thing rather than rounded, um, the fact that uh, the um, scales or the handles are, I think it's thinner maybe than they are later. Uh, but this one is from the very first run of knives that, that Spyderco made. So super cool. It still is very functional. I sent it into Spyderco. They cleaned it up a little bit, but I do carry it and stuff. So um, it does get scratched up, but just a cool piece um, from my collection uh, from the history of Spyderco. Uh, so let's move on to Cold Steel. So the first Cold Steel I'll show you, I've had a lot of different Cold Steel knives, but this one's a keeper. This is the 4Max Scout. And this is a, as you can probably tell, an Andrew Demko design, if you're familiar with his designs. Super big, super thick, heavy, beefy, and classic cold steel. Uh, has the triad lock. It is extremely smooth. Uh, came super smooth, easy to open and close one-handed. Uh, hard to get on camera, though, because it is so big. And um, just a good knife. Really like it. I like the... Again, fiberglass reinforced handles with the texture. I did run some um, sandpaper under the clip to make it a little bit less tough on the pocket, but I've used this knife a lot. Um, I've kind of done some edge damage to it and had to uh, repair it and stuff like that. And just a, a really nice solid knife. I tried to and kind of failed making a post to go through here that I could use as like a lanyard and make it so that it couldn't close, you know, like couldn't accidentally close on you because that's, something that some people have done, but I never could find the right sizes for the things. Um, another cold steel here, and I actually have a cold steel on the way. I ordered a cold steel code four from Amazon um, and got it and felt weird about it. There are fakes of cold steel code fours. Um, I really like lockbacks, Ethan Ruins, EDC. Um, I, I do like backlocks, uh, but it had weird etching, the code four that I got on Amazon, so I found it for actually uh, in the same price for the all black version on Chicago Knife Works and I uh, got that instead and returned the Amazon one. But this is a micro recon. I bought this second hand. Um, I actually bought it as a set to give one of them away, uh, but just a cool little knife. I like these keychain knives and it's surprisingly ergonomic. Um, you get the two fingers there then your thumb there and it actually feels pretty good in the hand and is um, pretty one hand open and closable. Um, it's easier when there's not a bunch of other stuff attached to it. But that's the Micro Recon 1 in Tonto. And then I'll show you this one also. Um, I actually have both versions of this. This is the FGX, uh, and it's all plastic. Uh, I have uh, this year, which is um, they've all been fine. I uh, have had no real issues other than they don't ship the fastest. All here quickly as some dealers, uh, certainly, you know, some other ones that I use. But other than that, I haven't really had any issues. I did have an issue with one of the knives that I got from them and they refunded me for it. It was a, like $6.50 um, Rough Rider. So that was cool. But anyway, this is an all plastic, again, fiberglass uh, reinforced. How do I always get the GCs as soon as they hit? Um, I have been buying them for a long time. And uh, so I have a lot of different dealers that I email, um, particularly Blue Creek Cutlery. If you do, you know, contact them, let them know that you heard the, from, uh, heard about them from Knife Thoughts. But um, Blue Creek Cutlery, Ken is just a a good guy. Um, I have had great service from him. I do buy from others, uh, collector knives. I use their reserve system, which uses a, uh, like a, a tele, an app called telegram. Um, and then knife ship free different places like that. But anyway, um, my wife also gave me the, uh, spear point version of this that's, uh, serrated. Um, and I really like it. I don't carry it around because I don't want to break it or lose it or anything because it's sentimental. But I have this one. Um, and cool knife. I mean, good letter opener or whatever. And, you know, pretty cool that they make a full plastic folding knife that certainly, you know, could 
be used. Uh, moving on to some random knives here. Uh, I have this. This is the Steel Will Gecko. Um, so my brother is a big hunter. Uh, he does sells property for hunting and is generally like a very serious hunter. Um, represents companies sometimes. And one of those was Steel Will. I actually have a couple Steel Wheels or have had. I, I have the Roamer, the fixed blade, which I really like. Um, I really like this design. One downside to this knife is that unlike some other uh, knives, like a lot of knives, really, Cold Steel and Spyderco, it's made so that if you close it one-handed, it can cut you a little bit. Um, so I do try to make sure to close it to, um, well, I guess that's one hand, but close it by putting my finger on the blade like this and then closing it rather than letting it drop. Um, but super smooth, probably the smoothest backlock I have or have had. Um, actually kind of amazingly smooth being a backlock. Uh, and it shows you how well, you know, these companies in Italy can make knives. Um, interestingly, I think Steel Will is made by um, Lion Steel. Uh, because they have a very similar construction. I don't know if it's the same factory or the same process or what. They have like a conglomerate of companies from Italy now too. But anyway, it's a nice knife. I don't carry it a whole, whole lot because of, you know, that. I've actually cut my finger with that a couple times. But it's a really nice design. Um, feels good in the hand and has a classic spearish, dropish point blade. Uh, so that's my only steel wheel folder. And then I have, again, from the same brother... Uh, this is actually a wedding gift, so super sentimental value to this one um, from the same brother. Uh, he has a friend who is a representative for Victorinox, and um, I'm not sure if that's how he got this or not, but he gave this to me. This is the Hunter Pro, I think is what it's called. Um, but either way, it's a, it's a nice knife. It's pinned um, like most Victorinoxes or maybe all. I'm not 100% sure of all of them, but it's pinned, so you don't have to worry about like it loosening up or anything. Um, nice and sharp, very sturdy blade with the uh, saber grind on it. And um, I didn't think when I saw these online that I would like the handle, but it actually fits my hand really well. And it has the A-Lox handle scales that are good looking. You can get that engraved. But um, a nice knife, uh, not super easy to close one-handed I do use that kind of uh hey Dom Bond how's it going I don't own any hog knives unfortunately I have considered for the past couple months getting a hog knife because I was at a um actually the same gun show that I got those spider coats and uh they had one of them one of the dealers there had the hog um mini flip and I really liked it. It was super nice. So I do think that Hogue seems to make nice knives and I would like to get one um, in the future. I just haven't yet. Too many other knives to get, you know. But this is an interesting knife. So this is the Geralt and there's really, I don't think, any model name. Um, online it said that it was 440A steel, I believe. I got this on Amazon for like $6. I wish that I had bought like 10 of them. Because it is a super nice knife for, for $6. Maybe not 10 maybe 5 I don't know. But um, super nice knife for $6. It has, you know, a plunger style lock, which is basically like an axis lock. And it is very smooth. It has, I believe, phosphor, yeah, phosphor bronze washers. Um, it came with good centering, good lockup, no blade play or anything like that. Um, and the frustrating thing is that this knife uh, it must have been a test run for, I think it maybe is made by San Renmu or whatever that's called, um, because it was a test run for another knife company, I'm forgetting what it's called now, but Real Steel maybe or something like that, that has a larger version of this, but it's like significantly more expensive. Um, so unfortunately you can't seem to get these anymore, but I really like it, it's a, you know, sometimes it's worth giving it a shot on a cheap knife. I saw a review of it that it was good and grabbed one from Amazon. But cool little knife, aluminum handles, 440A blade probably, and uh, access style lock. But um, So I actually haven't really carried this one much, but a friend and um, training partner in my normal job recently gave it to me. It's a cool knife. Um, so it's like very much styled like a tr traditional stiletto, but instead of being an automatic, it's a... Um, 
what's that called, uh, an assisted. So kind of cool uh, to be able to have, you know, a, a traditional stiletto style knife without it being illegal because unfortunately, as stupid as it is, you're not supposed to carry automatic knives here where I'm at. Um, but let's see, we'll move on to Kershaw. So uh, here is, I've got a few Kershaws. Um, here is the Kershaw Thistle. This is one of my favorite knives from Kershaw for a couple of reasons. First of all, um, I really like the design. Uh, it's a super ergonomic handle because it's nice and simple. It has, again, this fiberglass reinforced nylon with a texture that is what they call their K texture. I think it's well done. I like the blade design, blade shape. It's really great, very, very useful. You can get like rolling cuts and stuff. And um, it's, a, it's a really nice knife. I, I've bought several of these and given them as gifts and stuff. Um, they're usually pretty smooth. They're usually pretty well centered. They usually lock up. I've had like six or something go through my collection and not have really had any issues. The biggest issue that any of them have had is this one. And actually I kept this one because I wanted to give, you know, ones away that didn't have issues. It's not even really an issue is that it's the tip sits closer uh, to the top of the liners than on the other ones I've seen. Um, but not really even an issue. And it has this super cool lock where there's this button and you press the button and it actually pushes a, a liner across so that you can unlock it. But then it's safe too because, you know, it can't close until you let that off. Um, so you can actually close it like that by, um, you know, pushing that and swinging it down. Um, so, yeah, I, I wish that they would make more of those Geralt knives. Um, I think that they're nice uh, at that price. It probably wouldn't pay the, like, $40 or something that they... Um, happy holidays to you too, Ethan Ruins, EDC. I hope you have a great, uh, great holiday. But this is the Thistle. It's discontinued, and they keep going on sale. A lot of dealers must have a lot of stock of these because um, they keep going on sale. Uh, I would suggest getting one if you see one for under like $15, even under $20. I think it's a good deal. I got these for like way less than that though, like eight or 10 maybe. And it's a super good deal at that price. Um, I've used it a lot and stuff. But uh, <clears throat> so that's one of my Kershaws. Another one that I carry here is the Injection 3.0. This one was on sale at Walmart, I think. Um, so I got it, it was like either seven or $17, I think, um, which I felt was a really good deal. Uh, funny story with these injections. I love the design. Um, it's a Rexford design, uh, super simple handle, um, super classic drop point blade shape and uh, nice, you know, thick actually liner lock. Um, I like the look of it too. Um, I've had, uh, I actually, the funny story with this, I, I prefer the size of the 3.5, which has a 3.5 inch blade basically. Um, and uh, I had one, I took it to Costa Rica on vacation with um, my wife and lost it on the first day. Uh, so <laughs> that was a bit of a bummer, but this one, I, I did adjust it a little bit. It um, had a little bit of blade play, I think, when I first got it, but now it doesn't. And it is nicely centered. Um, easy to flip and actually with a little shake it's drop closed so very nice knife i like this design a lot another one that's discontinued from kershaw so if you find it for a good price i suggest it azr 13 mov steel i believe on that this one um is the kershaw decimus so this is a rick hinder design based on one of their knives i think it's called the maximus which would make sense maximus decimus aurelius from uh gladiator but uh this one I actually won from, I believe, KnifeJoy on Instagram, and uh, it's a cool knife. It um, is a dagger style design, but it's not a double-edged blade, so it's legal and everything. You know, there's some ambiguity with whether it would be or not with a double-edged blade, but it's an assisted knife, um, and it flips out very solidly and has this, you know, nice, again, fiberglass reinforced nylon covers over the frame lock. Uh, handle, which is stainless steel, and Sierra 13 MOV, and a very cool knife um, that I'm happy to have won. Uh, so that's my Kershaw's. Let's see, let's move on. So I'm going to leave the American Blade Works knives for last, uh, 
because um, I got that one most recently. But I'm going to show a bunch of Rough Riders here. I've gotten a bunch of modern Rough Rider knives recently um, for giving away for Christmas and for doing uh, reviews. I have a whole series of Rough Rider modern knives that I've been doing, um, including a video that's going to be coming out of kind of an overview of these knives. But I'm just going to start randomly here. Uh, so this is the 2043. And this is a nice little stainless steel frame lock. Um, very smooth. I think Rough Rider, if you haven't seen my videos on them, have been doing a really good job and a much better job recently of their modern knives. Um, nice design, well made, uh, flips nicely, locks up solidly, no blade play. Um, yeah, Rough Riders have been doing really good, both the traditionals, but also with the moderns, and I feel like you don't see the moderns as much online. So that's the Rough Rider RR2043. They don't have really model names other than the numbers, so that's how you can find that one. Um, got that for inexpensive. Let me see, I actually have it listed because I was doing a video. Uh, that one was $10, so pretty inexpensive. Um... Yeah, that's going to be a tough sell for the left side pocket clips on the Rough Riders. I'm just glad that they're doing tip up pocket clips. For a long time, they were doing tip only, uh, tip down only, which I really don't prefer. But this is the Rough Rider RR1822. And let's see which one this one is. So this one was only like $9 or something. Uh, again, most of these are from Chicago Knife Works, some are from Smoky Mountain Knife Works, but this is a super nice knife. G10 sculpted or machine G10 handles with a red uh, liner. Um, for it, 40A steel on both the last one and this one, which is what Rough Rider mostly uses, but a two-tone blade that's nicely designed, flips open with ball bearings. Oh, that previous one, the 2043 had ball bearings on uh, the pivot also. Uh, but this one can either use the thumb stud or the flipper and is super smooth. Um, it's centered well, locks up well. It's a big, bigger knife. Um, I think, here, I'll show you real quick. I think that it looks similar to, in design, to the um, ZT0561. Kind of a similar vibe that they have going there although the ZTO561 is bigger, similar um, in design, and I think it's a heck of a knife for $9 or $8 or whatever I paid. So that's another Rough Rider Modern. Which one do we have here? So this is the Rough Rider RR1983. Let's see how much this one was. This one was $7.50. I actually got a few of these also because I got one for a white elephant gift uh, for my family. We're not going to be doing the white elephant, unfortunately, uh, because of everything going on, or at least, I don't know if they're doing it, but my wife and I can't participate, unfortunately. I love giving gifts. I love giving knives as gifts, but I love any gift. I like finding something that I think people will like. Uh, so I definitely miss that. Um, but I got a few of these. I got one for that. I don't even remember what I did with the other one, but... Um, it is a knife that costs seven dollars and fifty cents, uh, and it is aluminum sculpted aluminum handles. I do wish that they had done the two tone on this side as well as on this side, um, because it would. I don't know why they wouldn't, and it would look good. Uh, it has a kind of cool modified sheet foot, you might call it. You know, similar to the Benchmade Benchmade's modified sheet foot blade shape that is two toned. Um, has ball bearings, as you can see. Super, super smooth, really flips out there with authority. Um, you can use the thumb stud, uh, but it's not perfectly centered, but it's not rubbing either, and it locks up really solidly. So just another really good value, in my opinion, from Rough Rider. Uh, let's see, which ones do we have here? 1826, I'm gonna save this one for last. So the 1826, which one? Oh, this is the red carbon fiber. So. This is a red carbon fiber laminate, I believe. Um, and uh, that was the main thing here that, that drew me to this knife because uh, you're getting a carbon fiber laminate for, what which number did I say this was? 1826, uh, that one, this one is $7.50. Now, this knife is pretty nice. It has a tipped up pocket clip. It's a frame lock. It has both thumb studs and a flipper. 
and uh, it's centered well and everything like that. It is a little hard to flip out. You have to really use a um, light switch. I don't know if I just prefer um, button, but it really doesn't work as a, a button style flipper. It works better as a light st switch style flipper. And I tend to have more issues. I think my default is to do button flipper. Merry Christmas to you too. Uh, I'm not sure if I can say that. Hibu Kane. Um, but Merry Christmas to you also. Uh, but honestly, still a pretty nice knife for $7.50. I mean, it locks up well. It's obviously assisted, as you can tell. Um, but no blade play, nicely centered. Um, this one I, I intend to give as a gift at some point, probably. I just don't know exactly <laughs> who or when yet. Um, and last, but definitely not least, this is the kind of the the real hit of this one in my opinion. Um, and this is probably, I believe, the newest of these, which makes me think the Rough Rider is going in a good direction. And this is the Rough Rider RR2084. So this knife, unlike the previous ones that I've shown, actually has a carbon steel blade, which is unusual for a modern knife. Um, but you can see some patina here. I should make sure that I keep it oiled, but um, some patina on this knife from cutting food and things like that. Uh, so it's a carbon steel, T10 carbon steel, which is, uh, it's a Chinese carbon steel. All of these Rough Riders are Chinese made and I'm not sure the properties of it. Um, I've heard that it's similar to 1095, but it seems to patina more like cases chrome vanadium. So I don't know if there's some vanadium in it or what, but or chrome or whatever. But this is another dagger style design. Although again, it's not sharpened on the second edge or the back edge. And this is a really nice knife, especially considering it's only a $14.50 knife or $15. Uh, it has a nice tip up pocket clip. It has real and nicely done G10 handles with red liners. Um, it has ball bearings. It flips very nicely. Uh, it's super smooth. It locks up solidly, has this nice nicely ground blade and just a, a really nice knife. Um, so I'm looking forward to trying more Rough Riders because it's a lot easier to buy a $15 knife than, you know, a $250 knife for me. Now, I do appreciate knives made in the USA. Uh, and I know some people have issues with knives made in China, um, but I don't really have issues with them. Um, and uh, I think that, you know, certainly Buying a knife from China, in my opinion, doesn't mean you agree with the things that the Chinese government does. But this isn't a political video whatsoever. Moving away from the Chinese-made knives, um, we can move into the American Blade Works. So as the name suggests, these are made in the United States. They're <clears throat> um, true mid-techs, uh, what some places would call custom knives. Um, they're made by one, one guy named Michael Martin, and these have all been sent to me for review, and uh, I really like them. I really appreciate it. This is the Model 1 V3, or version 3. Uh, it is a very nicely done um, liner lock flipper with aluminum handles, sculpted machined aluminum handles, titanium clip, and an S35VN steel blade. I have a full review on this, so check it out if you're interested, but... Very nice. I did have some recommendations uh, or some, I guess, feedback on this knife. And um, he is constantly improving the knives and they are now up to the V5. So this is the Model 1 V5. As you can see, it's uh, G10, although there are other versions, marbled carbon fiber, even um, micarta and things like that. But this is a G10 version rather than aluminum and it has a titanium backspacer. Uh, Merry Christmas to you, uh, Dilly Vasudevan. I'm sorry, I, I hate pronouncing people's names wrong. I really do. I wish I could know every language and pronounce people's names right all the time. But um, I hope you get the uh, sentiment anyway. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. Um, <clears throat> but this is the version 5 with some changes. One of the changes is uh, the clip on mine, I don't know if they were all like this, but sat above the handle on the V3. Mm -hmm. Um, adjusted that on the V5 very nicely. The clip is very nice. Um, another thing is that the screw kind of stuck off the end there. Um, and I actually completely took that screw out, which I think is a nice, you know, choice. A lot of people like it so that you can like run water through there and stuff. 
Um, now, one thing that didn't really bother me or come into my mind was the flipper tab being too long. Um, I'm going to do a full review on this knife, but um, that's one of the things here that they changed uh, is that the flipper tab is a little shorter. Um, same blade steel, same blade shape pretty much. Uh, one thing that I also said was that sometimes, especially with gloves on, it can be semi-difficult to get at this liner lock. And so, um, not necessarily because I said that, but um, it was nice to see that they, they did add a cutout there um, for the liner lock. But I'm gonna do a full review and uh, I plan to do an article also on this knife. So if you like this knife, if you like the look of it, um, check that out for sure. And then last here, I've got some more keychain knives. What did I do with? Oh no, not last. I have um, the Ontario Rat One. So uh, pretty much everybody has probably seen this knife already, uh, but let me grab it just to make sure that I uh, do my full collection. Well, not full collection necessarily, but I actually had this one not in the box because I carried it recently. Looks like I got some rust on there. I probably should do something about that, but. The Ontario Rat One is a classic for sure. Um, it is Aussie Steel, Ontario, uh, made in Taiwan, and super consistent. Um, giveaway too uh, for I think seventeen or twenty one dollars. People got them for this one. Like, either way, a really really good knife for the price. So um, you know, definitely a classic and. Uh, one that I like to use quite a bit. Um, I don't actually know what I did with the, is the Blade Works keychain knife, tactical keychains, keychain knife, the talk. Um, so I won this one in a giveaway on Instagram um, and I like it, I use it sometimes on my keychain and stuff. But that's pretty much my uh, modern knife collection. So we're coming up on a full hour of video. I'll set a few out here while I talk. Um, full hour of video. It's probably more than most people want to watch, but I will put this up on my channel. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I appreciate those of you who watched and uh, commented. Um, I'm live this. Let me know in the comments. Let me know what types of live videos you might want to see. Um, and I can, you know, these videos here. So I try to do more like that. Uh, these and um, that make it entertaining and not too rambly. But I hope that it has been entertaining and not too, too rambly. If so, make sure you subscribe to the channel. You see my other videos and hit the bell for notifications when I post new ones. Also check out my uh, social media, all at Knife Thoughts, Instagram, Facebook, and the like, and my website, knifethoughts.com, where I post articles on knives like this and knife-related topics. And uh, again, I hope everybody has a great holiday season, Christmas, New Year's, um, and, and all the other holidays for sure. Uh, it's going to be different this year, I think, for a lot of people, but I, I still hope you have a great holiday. And uh, last but not least, don't forget to go out and do good.